In this episode, we're gonna be talking about dampers and all the secrets you need to know to get the most out of your dampers. Going back to basics before we get involved with the different adjustments, a damper effectively is designed to control the movement of the spring, the movement of the wheel assembly, and the movement of the chassis itself. So that's controlled internally through valving inside the damper, and that effectively controls the speed at which the whole suspension assembly is allowed to compress and uncompress. In general, that's controlled by two main things called bump and rebound. So this coil over my hand has a rebound adjuster and a bump adjuster. And what those two things are is bump is how the coilover compresses and rebound is how the coilover extends. Now these do have effects over chassis dynamics as well, which we'll touch on. But ultimately, when you break it right down, that's what the two adjustment points do. So bump controls how the damper compresses and rebound controls how the damper extends. So behind me, we've got the four-way coilovers fitted to this GT3. So this is really the top tier of what you're gonna to fit to a car with a four-way adjustment. So you've got high-speed compression, high-speed rebound, low-speed compression, low-speed rebound. Compression and bump, are like for like. So you can say either really when you're referring to coilovers. This coilover in my hand is what you'd more often see, and it's a two-way coilover. This one's made by KW, and it's their V3 Club Sport, which comes with a top mount, but ultimately it's got an adjuster for your bump and an adjuster for your rebound. So you can independently adjust those two aspects of the coilover. So one question we get a lot is, is where do we set the dampers to when they come out the box, or where can you set your dampers to when you get them out the box? So a lot of coilovers are designed around the central point of adjustment to be a basis. But there's a lot of complexities around that, down to tire, the car, is it four wheel drive, two wheel drive, rear wheel drive, is the engine at the back or is it at the front or is it in the middle? So you've got to take all these factors into account when setting coilovers up. But to be more generic, a good way of thinking about it is, you always want the driven axle a little bit softer than the undriven axle because you want the car to find the grip on the axle that little bit more. It's a nice place to start. You also want to be working with the car, ideally, a little bit softer than too stiff. It's better to go out and test and adjust from a softer base than it is a stiff base. Because if the car's too stiff out the box, it's going to be unpredictable and it's going to be quite snappy to drive. But a softer car, which is just below where it should be, is a bit more compliant. It won't be quite as fast, but it's a bit more compliant and predictable, and it's a nice base to start from. So we'll often set a car just below the halfway point and we'll do our axle split. So we'll give our driven axle, say, roughly three clicks less than the undriven axle to give that division to find that grip. And then we'll work from that point. It's very important when it comes to dampers to keep in mind that it's a very subjective area of how a car drives. And every driver likes a car to handle differently as well. So when you're tuning your dampers, you're very much tuning them to how you want the car to handle. So that's why we start off with that softer base. And then based on the feedback from your driving and a bit of information we're gonna give you on the board in a second, you can then tune that damper to suit your driving style and find the grip for your car. So it's very subjective and it does need that little base of knowledge to find the perfect amount of grip for you and how you drive. It's quite a commonplace mindset when it comes to coilovers especially that you wanna be as stiff as physically possible when you're taking your car on track. Now, this is correct in certain environments, but as a majority, it's, it's not. So this comes down from like really high aero environments like Formula One, super stiff setups, so they can transfer that aero into the car and they're running slicks and they wanna control the massive aero forces as well as the geometry on the car. So running stiff is better in those scenarios. However, for most cars on the track, you've not got massive aero packages and you've got, you might have like a wing like on this M4 here or on the GT3, but you're not running massive amounts of downforce and actually it's better to be a little bit softer. So there's a, there's a middle ground on this. So too soft is slow and too stiff is slow and you need to be right in that window. So the best way to describe that is with a quick graph. So here we've got handling potential and here we've got stiffness of setup. So this is how it looks. So what we've got is a steady rise. So if we're too soft on the damper, the car's not gonna handle very well. It's gonna be wallowing around a lot. And due to that wallowing, the suspension is gonna be going through a lot of travel and it's gonna be changing the geometry a lot. So you've got camber gain, 
bump steer and a whole other aspect as well to think about when that suspension is going through its motion. So you wanna keep that under control. You've also got the issue that the chassis is physically rolling around too much and it can overload tires as it loads up and squashes down on the outside edge and lifts up inside and it's just rolling and wallowing around. So we wanna get that under control because that is slow. So as we come up, we start getting the chassis under a bit more balance and getting a bit more neutral. We're also keeping the suspension in less travel. So it's, it's going through a smaller amount of motion through the corner. So the geometry changes are also a lot less. And then as we come over here, we have a severe drop off as we get too stiff. So this is where we've got the car way too stiff. It's hitting bumps and the tire is leaving contact with the ground over a rough surface. And it's physically bouncing the tire off the ground. It's not being absorbed anymore. So the shock absorber is no longer absorbing the shocks from the road surface through the tire assembly and it's bouncing the car off the road. This is where tire is no longer in contact with the ground and we lose grip dramatically. So that's why it falls off really steep. As we get stiffer, 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 it just drops off like a cliff as we just lose all the grip out of the car. So that's why we like to set a car off softer than this peak here. Because if we're over here, we're in a potentially point where we've got a car that's quite dangerous to drive, it's unpredictable, and it's gonna have no grip in certain scenarios. So if we start off by adjusting over here in the softer window, not right down here at the fully soft end, but up here just under halfway, then that gives us the potential to tune that damper up and find our sweet spot. So we're gonna talk about that here, and we're gonna go on how you can adjust your shock to find your sweet spot and get your car handling perfectly out on track. On the board, we've displayed a few scenarios that you might encounter when you've got your coilovers fitted to your car for the first time and they're set in a base setting, similar to what we discussed previously, and this is what you might encounter. So first of all, we're gonna look at oversteer and understeer, the two main things you feel as a driver from your car, particularly out on track. So oversteer is the rear axle losing grip and rotating the car. So it's the rear wheels trying to rotate the car, it'll require a little bit of opposite lock to correct, that's oversteer. Understeer is the opposite of that, it's the front wheels losing the grip, and the, the car is gonna try and travel in a different direction to the direction of the corner. So as you turn in, the front is gonna lose grip, and instead of following the corner round, it's gonna push on straight, and that's understeer. So we're gonna look at dialing these two out, because you might encounter those initially when you've got your coilovers and your damper set to a base setting. So starting with oversteer, we're going to be adjusting our rebound on the coilovers. Low speed rebound or just rebound if that's all you've got. This is applicable for a one way all the way through to a four way coilover. So for oversteer, we're gonna be going to the front of the car, to our front coilovers, and we're going to stiffen our front rebound. Depending on how many clicks you've got in your damper, you might have seven, you might have 30 or more. That determines how many clicks we're going to do. But as a rule of thumb, two, to three is a, is a nice number for a lot of clicks and if you've not got a lot of clicks just one so we're going to make that coil over a little bit stiffer on the front axle on the rebound adjuster that's going to help dial out our oversteer now if we're getting understeer we're going to move to the back of the car and we're going to again adjust our rebound adjuster at the rear of the car and again we're going to be moving that in a stiffer direction from where we are currently and that's going to help us dial out our understeer now, again, this points out why we start a car softer. Because if we started our coilovers over here on the stiffer section and we were getting oversteer and understeer, we wouldn't be able to use these really basic steps to dial it out because we'd already be too stiff. We'd run out of adjustment and then we're really stuck. Where do we go from there? So that's where a lot more knowledge needs to come into the scenario. But if we're starting off softer, these tricks are gonna work. So it's a really nice, simple way to make sure you're moving in the right direction and not the wrong direction with drastic consequences. So that's why a softer shock is better. And then we're gonna stiffen that as we go to dial out the issues that we encounter out on track to get a nice neutral balance of the car through the chassis. Once we've dialed out the initial oversteer and understeer, particularly on corner entry, we can start to look at how the car exits the corner. So exit grip is important because the car is doing different things dynamically. You're getting back on the power and the car is gonna transition from being loaded over on one side into a more even load into the rear axle as the, as the throttle is applied. So a lot of things happen in that, in that transition of chassis to get out of the corner. So at exit, we can suffer from exit grip on the front and the rear, and it can lead to corner exit, oversteer and understeer. But we can do a few more things on the exit to control that scenario. So if we're getting corner exit, understeer, there's two things we can look at. 
One is, as we're getting on the power, the rear might be compressing too much and lifting the front of the car up effectively, unloading the front tires, causing the understeer to occur. This can be helped by firming up the rear bump on the damper and making that just a little bit stiffer. So that means that as the car transitions on throttle, that, that transition of mass is a bit slower and more controlled and it doesn't quite pitch the nose up quite as aggressively, keeping traction on the front and helping to reduce the understeer. Another option is if we want that compression to get traction at the rear, say in a rear wheel drive car and, and going stiffer will impact our, our car mid corner and corner entry, we can look at adjusting the rebound on the front. So what we can do instead is we accept that the car is gonna go into that squat pattern on the throttle, and we can soften that rebound slightly to let the front assembly lower down to the ground faster. So instead of being carried up with the chassis and losing grip, it remains down on the tarmac and gives us that grip for corner exit to help reduce the understeer. Now, if we're getting oversteer on corner exit, it's almost the opposite. So we can do two things. One is we can soften the bump on the rear coilover to help the car squat onto the rear tire to load it up on corner exit and give that grip. Or what we can do is we can firm up the front rebound very slightly and that's gonna do the opposite of what we were talking about before. And it's gonna let the car carry that front tire up very slightly and just remove a touch of grip from the front axle and help distribute that back to the rear wheels to get that grip. For me personally, I prefer using the compression for the oversteer scenario to help the rear squat a bit more rather than taking away from the front with the rebound. I like to give to the rear with the compression setting. So for me personally, that's, that's the route I would take in that scenario. So the final point we'll touch on is general lack of grip. So this is the whole car. So if you feel like the whole car is suffering and it's all a bit wallowy, a bit too soft in general, that's where we're gonna look at adjusting our bump. So what we'll do in this scenario is all four corners we're gonna treat evenly. We're gonna keep our distribution that we set earlier, but we're gonna treat the whole car as a whole and we're gonna firm up the bump a few clicks. So we're gonna go, say three clicks on all corners, one click if there's less adjustment in your damper, but each corner is gonna get exactly the same amount of adjustment. We're gonna keep doing that until we feel the car start to just hop and skate slightly over bumps. That means we've gone too far. This is where we've come over the curve past optimum and we're starting to fall off. When we hit that point, we're gonna knock the compression back a few clicks or two, and that's gonna put us back onto the peak of that window, and that's gonna be the optimum amount of grip for that car. So that's how we treat general lack of grip, just to find that sweet spot. These three aspects are more for fine tuning the balance of the car and how the car rotates. And again, it's all very subjective on your driving style, tire that you use, and the car that you have as well. We've covered quite a lot in this video on the damper basics, how to get them out of the box, set them, and then how to adjust them, as well as what the different amount of adjustments are in a coilover and what they affect. If you want a bit more detail, or particularly how to adjust a three-way and four-way coilover, head over to the website where we've got a lot of information in our articles over there. We'll link the damper how to adjust and tune article in the description below as well. If you want anything in particular covered in our future videos, please pop that in the comments. We'd love to hear your feedback, and then we can start to tailor these videos around exactly what you want to learn and hear.